Welcome to Patient Power from Milan, Italy. I'm Andrew Shore. We're on the scene at the meeting of the European Hematology Association. And of course, one of the important diseases they discuss each year is the latest news for CLL, or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And the leading researcher, a leader in the field, is Dr. Peter Hillman from Leeds. He sat down with us to give us his perspective on the latest news. We know from, from our previous experience over many years that when patients fail our frontline therapies and, and are, are resistant to, to treatment or have porous disease, their, their outcomes in terms of quality of life, in terms of time in remission and in survival are very poor. Uh, and so we need better therapies. Our conventional therapies in that group of, of patients, such as antibody treatments, are, are really not effective enough. And what we've shown in, in the Resonate trial, which is the the largest randomized phase three trial in this group of patients that we've seen, which compared one of the new agents, ibrutinib, as a single agent against the conventional therapy for those uh, in those patients, was as a significant improvement in terms of responses, tolerability of treatment, and in survival. So really exciting results, I think, for patients uh, with, with relapsed uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I think as things stand with this trial going forward, the, the drug is likely to be approved and likely to be used as a, as a single agent uh, oral therapy, so just as, just as three capsules a day in CLL uh, taken every day and controlling the disease. Uh, we're seeing very good responses. It's usually very well tolerated when used that, that way. I think the excitement, as well as having a very effective new agent in CLL and really much better than we've had before, is how we will combine this agent with other treatments. So can we really improve the outcomes of therapies, of conventional therapies, both in relapsed patients and in frontline? How do we combine different oral therapies, potentially or antibody therapies in, the, in this drug, to get better, deeper remissions, and potentially in the future be able to stop treatments rather than continue it indefinitely and, and, and move at least to better survival and, and the ultimate aim of moving towards cure of this disease. So idololacib uh, is, a, is a similar agent to, to ibrutinib. It's a, it targets CLL cells, it stops them proliferating, it stops them growing, it moves them from the, the tissue as ibrutinib does into the, to the blood uh, and uh, creates remissions and, and, and it has also very impressive re results in randomized trials. Adelelacib is generally been used in CLL in combination with rituximab, with antibody-based therapy. Um, the, the randomized trial showed a, a very impressive improvement with a combination of rituximab plus adelelacib compared to ritu rituximab alone. And again, overall survival advantages seen with, with that combination. We're going to present some more results from, from that trial uh, in this meeting in, in EHA, showing actually Quite interestingly, that if you give adelelacib before rituximab, you get very much less re infusion reactions to the rituximab. So it alters the, the, the way the disease responds to other therapies. So I think adelelacib will also be an important part of our treatment for CLL. The patients entering the trials for the two drugs, adelelacib and ibrutinib, were slightly different. So um, patients had lower platelet counts often in the adelelacib, um, as I said, were compared, com combined with rituximab. So I think there's, there's a place for both drugs as they're being approved and both will improve outcomes and we may look at combining them with different agents or even together potentially in the future. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. So we have data on these drugs going out now to three or four years where most patients Many patients remaining on treatment resistance is relatively rare, although there is an emergence certainly with, uh, with ibrutinib that we're seeing a small number of patients with resistance evolving in, in, in the disease. And what has to put this into perspective, it's a very small number of patients in a very um, sort of heavily pretreated group of patients. So if you're going to get resistance, they're the patients who are likely to become resistant. Thus far, uh, we've seen resistance in less than 10% of patients treated with therapy for over a year. So it's not a, going to be a common phenomenon. When we see it earlier, when we treat the patients earlier, it's likely to be less 
frequent, although we have to watch this space very carefully. One of the advantages we have in CLL compared and other indolent lymphomas compared to uh, the other targeted treatments like chronic myeloid leukemia is we have multiple different agents being developed which target different genes. So, for example, if there's a mutation in a gene which tends to be specifically make one drug not work, we can use the other drug in that, in that patient and that is likely in many patients to be effective. Uh, we have th other drugs coming along with different targets which will also improve, improve uh, outcomes with in resistant disease. But I think what's really exciting is that we will prevent resistance emerging by using two or three of these drugs together. Therefore, if you like, cornering the disease so it can't escape from a single agent as we're seeing with other targeted therapies in other diseases. What we're doing with these therapies, we have much better therapies than we've had for this group of patients, but we're changing the paradigm of treatment. We're changing the treatment to continuous disease control, and thus far, uh, the randomized trials have continued treatment until progression, which, of course, if patients don't progress, is, is indefinite therapy. And so, um, in, from our experience with CML, which is now 15 years since we had similar targeted therapies, Patients don't like to take therapy, understandably, for, for a prolonged period of time. They don't want to come to hospitals and be dependent on doctors all the time. Uh, there's concerns over tolerability over a long period of time, over toxicity, over resistance, as we talked about before. So there's lots of reasons why we might not want to give these therapies for a prolonged period of time. We also have, from our previous experience, sort of prognostic markers of things that we can predict whether a patient's going to remain in remission. If we can achieve an eradication of detectable disease with conventional therapy, we know those patients do really well over a long period of time. So I think our ultimate aim has to be to use these targeted treatments to drive patients into a negative, a disease negative remission, an MRD negative remission. Um, the drug you allude to, ABT199 or GDC199, which works on another pathway in CLL and, if you like, persuades the cell to, cells to kill themselves, which is um, uh, different to the ibrutinib adalacib, has resulted in some MRD negative remissions as a single agent. So that's very encouraging and, and because the, the pathway is different with ABT199, it should really work very well with these B cell receptor antagonists, adalacib and ibrutinib. So I can see that if we combine those two agents together and we have also very effective antibody therapies now, or binituzumab, ofatumumab, to add into the mix, that we might be able to get higher proportions of patients into negative remissions and therefore be able to stop treatments, at least temporarily while we watch patients for until they progress, or hopefully, ultimately, uh, permanently. Our frontline trial in the UK, which is due to start in the next few weeks, randomizes patients be between FCR and ibrutinib plus R and in that trial, if patients achieve MLD negativity, they do stop ibrutinib. So our aim is to move to a, to a point where we can give a short to medium term treatment and stop treatment in uh, the majority of patients. Thanks to Dr. Hillman for his leadership in CLL and taking the lead in all the latest research. On location in Milan, I'm Andrew Shore. Remember, knowledge can be the best medicine of all.